I know it's true, but then like with Jackie, she yeah. does say, if you look at Jesus, when was his breakthrough? At the cross. You're really as asking in me this. Just, <laughs> 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 no, as in, let me tell you the way what I was treated in this country. Like, I was like, I'm I really in Kenya <laughs> because there's no way. Why are you stopping transport for creators? We're just, I'm just like, we're just normal creators. Why are you stopping traffic? Wow. What? For us, wow. why are we going on the wrong side of the road? Why do we have police ex- ex- nini, wow. escorts? I was like, Hi guys, welcome to my channel. What on a pizza? Hello guys, welcome to a new episode of Banter Over Brown. Yes, we are finally back for another season. Well, we already did an episode with uh, the lovely Stephanie for episode one, but it has been quite a bit of time before we recorded another episode. Yeah. So yeah, excited to be back. We're fully, fully back. We're fully, we're fully, fully, fully back. back. Yeah, episode yeah. 120. And yeah, we're excited for the season, hoping that we stay consistent and that we keep Churning out really good content. So guys, be sure to like, follow, subscribe, do all of that. Yeah. Mm, and right now we are also working with another good partner. I might be by the time this episode comes out. Hey. Yeah. Guys, we won't name drop. Yeah. But you need to be on the social media platform to support us because that's where a lot of the content is gonna be heavy and your support means a lot. Just like a like or like a comment that goes a long way. That being said, as you can see, we have someone else joining us in studio. I'd have to just imagine is it too. Mm-hmm. Hi, my name is Alice Kanji. <laughs> I'm Alexia Musao, and we are joined by the gorgeous Kit Candy. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we're so happy to have Kit on this episode. We told you that we're going to be having a lot more guests, not only this season. We have been saying that we are moving towards having a lot more guests on the platform. And so today we decided we're going to give you get another banger <laughs> and so yeah let's i think we can get into the episode we can get into the episode i think maybe just for people who don't know kate maybe you can just give us like a brief introduction as we get into the episode okay well hello everyone <laughs> my name is kate kendi wanjiko i am a full-time content creator on youtube on instagram I was about to say I'm a podcaster as well, but <laughs> you yeah, are that, 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 to be consistent to be a podcaster as long as you've released an, an episode, episode, as long as it's there. Yeah, yeah. as long as it's there, okay, history. And uh, there's some history. Mm. Okay, a podcaster with some history. <laughs> yeah, and I'm a daughter, a friend to a Sam, mm-hmm. a supporter. A girl's girl. Hey. Yeah. I've mm-hmm. done that. You know, Alexa used to introduce herself like that. You and I've always followed me. that intro quite interesting. Which one? My daughter, mm-hmm. a friend, yeah. a nini. Like, yeah, um, a sister, a lover. <laughs> and then <laughs> the last thing I added. <laughs> a wifey, a mother to the- <laughs> It's just in case you're looking for somebody like that. Yeah. It's just making it known, ah, you know? Nini. Yeah. To just yeah. get the personality. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, so, what does that mean? Because me, I never introduced me. I've never in my life introduced myself that way. As a? Uh, like that way? Like, yeah. Like, does that give another, a different perception? I think it's. Yeah. 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 If I, I say I'm a daughter, it for me it means I love my mom so much Aww. that I'm identifying myself, Aww. you know, as a daughter. Or that's I love cute. girls so much, so mm. I'm a girls girl. Okay. A support of girls. You know that's why I'm here. Hey. Don't do it too. But then Kate was one of advice. the best people like we've reached out to on email. Like you are generally so excited to come. I was like, you all can't tell me all these nice things and expect me not to <laughs> but then come. Just send nice I, the email, email so I was nice just like, email. okay. <laughs> I'm the shit there. Yes, yes, yes. I'll yeah. be there. I'll yeah. be there. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Love to see it. Thanks so coming. before we start, like, how's everyone been? How's everyone's week going? Start us off. Mm. How's your week going? <laughs> um, I think my week is going, I mean, we're recording this on a Tuesday. So I think the past week or so, mm-hmm. I think it's been going okay. My birthday happened. Yay. The last episode we hadn't mentioned that. But yeah, I had a pink birthday a barbie themed birthday party and everybody was 
they were on their Zoom. Mm. The, everybody was Black in pink seats. and white, including the guys. The decor was fantastic. Shout out to Picnics Galore because they really made my Barbie theme come to life. Um, feels, it, I think it's the first time when I was, you know, of course, when you have a birthday, it means you've turned age, you've get, got older. It's the first time I was having a birthday and I'm getting older and I was getting scared. Normally, I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, I'm turning 18. Yeah, I'm scared, <laughs> you know? And then now we've got, okay, now I'm, okay, I don't know if I want to say my age, but now I'm th- this year, I'm a year older and it was just like, oh my God, like that's basically 30 if you do the math. That girl and math. Now, <laughs> do the girl course, math. If you do the girl math, it's 30. <laughs> and now I'm just, of course, quarter life crisis. I can't even say I'm quarter yeah, life crisis quarter. for my 20s because I'm just like, okay, if by 30 I'd wanted to get this amount in my bank, then I am nowhere near close to where my dreams are. So I'm just like really scared. And, but anyway, the party itself was amazing. <laughs> Um, we had the DJ lineup even. We had two amazing DJs who came and performed for us. I got the best gifts, flowers. I think it was also just a sign of adulting for me because it was like, wow, everybody is feeling a theme. And, you know, people are actually coming with gifts. Uh, we cooked. I It was supposed to... Okay, so I, I don't know. What do you guys feel about charging your friends for birthdays? Some people have we were about to talk about it. it. Remember, I think on Twitter we said we need to talk about this. Some yeah. other time someone said that, that yeah, I don't believe in people coming for your birthday and you're, and you're telling them to pay the bill. I know there are two schools of thought. Because when <laughs> we have dealt with someone who's like, no, we have to cater for everything. And I never thought about it like that. I was like, I, my friends are okay paying. Yeah. Yeah, so me, me, I'm indifferent. I don't mind paying for my friends' things and I don't mind paying for them because it depends on the type of party that I'm having also. Sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm catching for everything. Other times I'm like, okay, guys, um, this is what I'll do. Then we can split this bit. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think it just depends on what you're also doing. Sometimes maybe you're doing a trip. You can't possibly pay for the mm. whole trip and mm. maybe you want guys to pay towards their trip. Yeah. Over time. So what mm. do you think about paying? I think it depends on where you are in life. Mm, <laughs> true. So now if you see me making, I have money. You expect it, see, now it depends with how you are making it in life, mm-hmm. according to how you feel. Mm-hmm. I might want a high-end party, mm-hmm. and I know where my friends are. Of course, I may decide to pay for them mm-hmm. or not, but it's my birthday. So I think mm-hmm. I set the tone mm-hmm. on how... You know, it goes. So if I'm doing really well and I want to celebrate and I know my friends can't celebrate me the way I want to, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, if I can. Yeah. Yeah. But if I can't, then we're gonna do a small thing and yeah, I know that you're able to then, we can all come yeah. together and do it. I was really trying my best to, okay, so me, I'm a believer of people. I don't mind paying for people's birthdays. Mm. It almost feels like, you know, when you're selected as a bridesmaid, mm. it's like you've taken up that, it also, it and said it automatically also means you're going to pay for your things. Thanks for bringing that up because <laughs> some brides actually pay for everything. You see, because really? it's still, it's very different at the end of the day. Because sometimes even we're talking with a friend of mine who recently got married. And of course, like it's a young couple. So of course, we didn't expect her to pay for our stuff, you know. So I knew from the get go, okay, we're covering certain costs, mm. makeup, outfits and all that. But I've also talked to another friend who her friend couldn't show up for her wedding because she had just lost her job, mm-hmm. was was mm-hmm. expectant, like really couldn't afford. And my friend, I think, was still sticking to the theme, you know, yeah. and sticking to this is the service providers we're working with. So it was hard for her friend to match that in that season of life. So, yeah, <laughs> it's good. You know, it's funny. You, think you, weddings, you you should pay for your bridesmaids things or I mean, depends. right now people are even doing like bridesmaids proposals. I don't know if you've seen yes, those things. Yes, like, <laughs> I just feel like there are levels to everything. Yeah. And if you can manage something, do just them. do it. Mm. Do you, do you, you know? think as a friend you should be understanding then if this is who I am and this is what I'm expecting from you? I mean, if we are being understanding girlfriends to our boyfriends, I don't know why oh. you should not be understanding to your friends. Your friends. <laughs> hey! Uh, it's just a <laughs> 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 
Kate has said that kuna mambo yeah. 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 I think no, sometimes like friendship we make it look like we should settle for or we should give less, you know, mm-hmm. or so, yeah, so yeah, keep no, the I same really standard. Like yeah. So I was also while I was planning my birthday, I was trying to figure out a pricing that is going to be fair for people but also they get the value for what they're paying for. Yeah. And the best way to do that for me was through food. Mm. So we really from like Eight nine a.m. I had my girls were let down. Sana kina Alexia, but it that's another story for another day. You know, I had two three of my girls come in help me cook. I had my helps come in to help me just do a lot of catering, and I also just realized I am my mother's child, or I'm just like my mom. Because yeah. when growing up, you know we. We were known to host a couple of parties and my mom was the worst person to be around when she's hosting something. God bless her. Just because like oh, wow. the food had to just be excessive amount for her to feel like I'm comfortable. Mm. And that's just even how we are. I find it strange sometimes when I go to people's houses, okay, I'm about to stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I go to people's houses and like the food they cook, niya kutosha. There was no yeah. way that like food ends. My mom is, we are not, we've not cooked enough food. So just realizing when I got that ah, the food is too much, but people are feeling, you know, the, the core was amazing. Yeah. So the money went to something really useful. And yeah, anyway, long story short, the, <laughs> the question was birthday. amazing. Yeah. And I don't mind having people pay for their own things so long as they feel the value of what they're getting. Yeah. And, you know, as a friend, I was also being really considerate. I was trying to be considerate about people's pockets. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. That's been my week. My yeah, birthday that's been your life-ing. birthday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Birthday. And the rest has just been life yeah. and just trying to push through. Mm. We are getting back to season two of my tech story podcast, my tech story Africa podcast. Go check it out. That's my tech podcast, and now we're evolving, we're elevating. So I'm excited to see what what next is in store. Mm. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah. For your TED talk. Yeah, Kate, how have you been? How's your week been? Uh, I think I've been fine. Yeah. I mean, today I woke up, my eye is swollen. <laughs> I was charging steamer mm. zikayenda. Um, but I made it here. Yeah. 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 You're, you're, you're being tested. I was being tested. <laughs> yeah, but um, I think it's been an interesting week of seeing like the way the September has been. Yeah. September was also my birthday month as well. Yeah. Yeah. September when? Ninth. Wow. The ninth, okay. yeah. Yours is on the 14th. Oh. Yeah. Mm. September to go in. To go. <laughs> Vagos. I love it. Vagos are everywhere. No, that's why I'm Jewish. Yeah, Tinini. I keep sad that it's ending. But yeah. yeah. But yeah. I think also the turning a new age thing, mm. it was also on me. And I think it's been on me. But uh, my therapist was like, you know, turning a new age, you're actually privileged mm. to turn a new age. So I don't watch. I was like, I know, but Talk you know, <laughs> don't stop saying it like that. I'm in like a bubble now, you yeah. know, of thinking of the things I wanted to achieve by this age. And so many things happened as I was turning a new age. So it's kind of interesting. It's like you're entering, I feel like I'm entering a new season. So I'm trying to make sure I make the best out of this new year mm. for me. Yeah. Mm. So it's a lot of reflection, a lot of growing and maturing. And it's been, yeah, that's how it's been so far. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. Yeah. I'm not born in September. <laughs> I'm born in October, so back the month is coming. What are you doing for us? You see, pressures me. <laughs> Why must we do things for birthdays? <laughs> okay, I always talk like that every year, then I end up saying, okay, guys, let's just do something small. You know you'll do something. You better you might as well be honest it. with yourself now. <laughs> yeah, so looking forward to birthday season. Um, September has been a good month. I feel like it went really fast. Because I think when the last time we met, like that was August and we're already ending yeah, that's <laughs> September. Crazy. Time is really, really flying. Like it's almost Christmas, guys. But I've been good. Um, I was thinking about what to share with you guys. So there's this book I've been reading. It's taken me ages. Uh, Shonda Rhimes, The Year of Yes. So when I was reading the book, I was like, hmm, I don't think this book is for me because I think I'm a person who, like when she describes the story, it's like she's such an introvert and she's always... If you don't know Shonda Rhimes, she wrote like one of the biggest shows, or some of the biggest wow. shows, mm-hmm. Grey Anatomy, uh, Scandal, How to Get Away with Murder and all that. But she's always wanted to be behind the scenes and she 
would not take up a lot of opportunities. Anyway, so she said that she's giving herself a year where she says yes to everything. So I was like, I feel like I'm a confident person. I feel like I say yes to a lot of opportunities. So I was like, hmm, I'm not sure this book is for me. <laughs> but I was like, wait, I still feel like there's so many things I say no to, even without actually saying no, by just ignoring, not sending an application, not, exactly, you know, just different things and you and i said okay saying yes to yourself yeah and world. saying yes to the opportunities that are just in front Surface of me level, you know yeah. so i was like okay i think that's a way i can apply it and so i'm going to tell you something interesting that i did yesterday so my mom is an actor if you guys don't know like a renowned actor so there's so this project she's working on <laughs> and they needed an extra I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, like, because <laughs> the show hasn't yet aired. But anyway, so she told me, ah, hey, your mom is working on a new show. Yeah, no, they've they've launched it, but it's premiering in, in October. So anyway, she was like, oh, they, they need an extra for this. I told them, you can act. My mom and putting me in things. <laughs> and I've never really acted, like, on a show. I've done commercials, but not a show. show. So me, I said, yes, fine, I'll come, you know. So I went and guys, that's like the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. But it was so <laughs> exciting. It was hard because So you're gonna be on a show. Yeah, I'm gonna be on a show, guys. <laughs> and I had two scenes. <laughs> and Nilinyashawa, <laughs> I've ever been Nyashawa on like TV, like it's it's not a joke. <laughs> they don't care. Like I wasn't breathing. <laughs> guys, I was drenched. <laughs> Na makeup. And Hey, thank God my room is not of makeup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I keep your eyes open. Yeah, thing. I had to. I couldn't even hear the instructions because <laughs> the rain, and it's the fake rain. No, that's one the enemy. But anyway, I felt so nice after it because I was like, okay, it's my first time acting. This was a hard scene, even for seasoned actors. A, a rain, dark at night, emotional scene is not. So you're being easy. emotional. Just not that he cried, like, but you know, you just, I was meant to be sad. I don't know how it's, but they looked happy, so I think I did my <laughs> job. So, anyway, I felt nice after I did it, and I was like, Yeah, this is my year of yes, and this is my year of exploring and having fun and not taking things so seriously, not taking myself so seriously. I think that's one thing sometimes I can do and want to have all the facts, I want to be perfect at the first try, so yeah. Guys, it's make this your year of yes and <laughs> say yes think, to things. Yeah. yeah. I, I, can you relate to that? Do you feel like sometimes you hold yourself back and you're like, ah, I think I'm imposter syndrome. I mean, know? of course, I think that's nature of being human. You know, I think mm-hmm. each of us have moments like that. And there's always uh, inside you a feeling of even when you're doing a lot of mm-hmm. like, I can still do more. And that's the more is what I guess we are not saying yes to. Mm. And so if you just, it's basically just saying you need to push ourselves to do more and yeah. say yes to the things that internally we are just pushing behind. Yeah. And I think that's a mantra that I'll probably be going with this mm. year. I have a word that I think I'm going to follow for this year, but I don't know if I want to share yet. Yeah. When you're ready. Yeah. 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 When you're ready. When you're ready. Mm. Awesome. That was a nice catch up. So I think we can go now into K. <laughs> we introduced ourselves as a full time content creator. Yes, yes. That's a heavy term. You know, before people used to take content creation like as a side yeah, hustle, yeah, they yeah. always felt like, oh, I need to still have this main thing that I'm doing mm-hmm. and then create content on the side. So, how has the journey been from probably not knowing what content is to now being a full time content creator? Like, if you can just give us <laughs> how, yeah. how we got here. No, it's funny. Mm-hmm. Really. My content is my belly and Ayuma, literally. Wow. If yeah. that just decides <laughs> it's not working out, then I don't know what else. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> and I think it's being a full-time content creator. Before, I was actually a full-time content creator. I remember I started uh, in 2017, and I started with my friend Shelly. We met in uni. Mm. We liked each other, thought we could do something together. And I remember even when I started, I didn't think this would be my end game in yeah. a way. I was just doing it for fun, basically, because I liked YouTube. I liked watching people on YouTube and I thought, you know, maybe I should do it. But the funny thing is, when I was on camera, I was not looking at the camera. Mm. All our episodes, I was looking that side. <laughs> That's, I was not confident at all, oh. at all. At all. So yeah. for me, it was not something I thought at would be full time. It was just for fun. Sorry. Um, what were you studying in uni at that time? I was doing... I remember when I started uni, I started with uh, being a journalist. Okay. But I mm. decided to do PR. Mm. 
Mm. I realized journalism is not for me. And it's actually the looking at the camera thing as well. Mm. I was like, you want to be a journalist and you can't even look at the camera. Mm. So like yeah. I have somebody next to me, I'm not even alone and I could not. I, I was not confident in mm. front of the camera. So for me, I didn't think it was an end game. So I knew I'm going to do a nine to five and content creation is going to be you know, an addition thing. I didn't think it would actually, like, it could pay like that. So after I started with Shelly, decided to go our separate ways. And then that's when I realized I actually have what, a passion for what it. Did you, what do you mean by decided to go your separate ways? Oh, because we started together. You see, like, so the way you the guys are starting. Or oh, like a YouTube channel like together. Yeah, yeah. The way oh you are God. together, then you decide, you know, it's not working. Yeah. Mm. You know, what are, mm. are we going to save this channel or are we going to save our friendship? Because mm. we are friends first. Mm. But then oh, we were not having the same visions. Mm. So I was like, you know what, let's just save this friendship. Yeah. <laughs> That was wise. And, yeah, and let's, <laughs> and give everyone let's all do something that uh, we we are passionate about. So I did continue with uh, YouTube for a while. Actually, until now, I'm still doing YouTube. Then I started getting serious with Instagram. Let me tell you, I used to ignore Instagram. I was like, what is this? Why would you ignore Instagram? I didn't think. <laughs> <laughs> it was going to be. A thing. Yeah. Oh, it was an era of everyone was on Facebook. Yeah. In and fact, it was cringe to be a content creator. Exactly. YouTube. And, and I was yeah. like, and I'm not a person who was like, should I say at, at that time I thought poor self absorbed you're just taking pictures of yourself and you're putting stuff up to see you why why are you doing all that that's how yeah. I'd seen it at that time because I was in Facebook and it was just writing your, your thoughts. Two small thoughts you know it was never something it wasn't Instagram mm. so I ignored Instagram for the longest time but then my partner at the time was like, you know, we need to implement this. But then I was still focusing on YouTube at the same time. Like, I think at the time YouTube was everything. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you were doing, you started, you said you started 2017. Yeah. Around the time when I really also was trying to be a YouTuber mm. as well. Yeah. So I was really focusing on YouTube mostly. And it was also the only platform that could pay you. Mm. Although it's peanuts, mm. but it was the only. You could monetize. You could yeah. really monetize. And, and the model was sort of straightforward. Mm. You know, get this views, get yeah. this, yeah. get money. Yeah, 100%. but it was, it's easier to get followers on Instagram than on YouTube. YouTube mm. has to be probably the hardest <laughs> platforms. Watch it. Even with, when TikTok has come, it's still, YouTube is still mm. hard. It, you just don't blow yeah. up like that. And mm. even if you blow up, people will not subscribe. Mm. It's like gonna be maybe one video. <laughs> so you get views. Really you get the views. But people are not Tebu, subscribing. You, as a bunch of a branch <laughs> listener, you are here. You are just views. enjoying the Levante. <laughs> and you're not subscribing. subscribing. Yeah. I, and I know for most of us who do content creation, most of us love it. And as much as we're like, you know, numbers don't matter, in a <laughs> way it does because it tells you are we reaching our audience? Yeah. Uh, is our audience enjoying this or not? So it's it's been a, a crazy journey. Mm-hmm. But I decided to take Instagram seriously and it worked out eventually. To supplement now. To supplement the YouTube, the YouTube yeah. now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you mentioned that, you know, numbers matter and, you, you know, how difficult it is to grow on YouTube and that what you're getting out of it is basically peanuts. Mm. Could you just elaborate for... Hey, elaborate... <laughs> Could you kind of just elaborate for us one how the YouTube paying system works and how it ends up being redundant compared to the other platforms? And two, why you still decided to stick to YouTube? So I, I'll start with the last one. I still stick to YouTube because I love it. Mm. I feel like that's the only place I can be fully myself mm. and communicate with my audience. Because all these years I have accumulated people who you know, come to me for entertainment or for something. Yeah. I, I have an impact in their life one way or another. So I'm like, I have this community. I must stick by them. Mm. <laughs> I must stick by you guys. And you enjoy. Yeah. Think, yeah. So I, it's, it's YouTube for me, it's a passion. There's mm. no other, because like I've said, it doesn't really pay like that. Mm. It doesn't, unfortunately. Mm. So it's a passion. That's why I've stuck by it. And I love it. That's mm. why I still mm. keep, <laughs> keep going, going at back, it. Yeah. So for YouTube, I know, when before us were monetized, I think it was like a thousand hours of watch time mm-hmm. or a thousand subscribers. I don't know if it's still the same, but that's what it needs for you to be monetized. Mm-hmm. But I know for for mostly Africa, 
Does it work like the US? You know, you see YouTube ads on US. Yeah, mm-hmm. somebody large. they know I bought my mama a house. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm driving a Tesla. I okay, can tell you how much revenue they earn, yes, and they're they, like, yeah, you it's calculate. crazy for us. Our let's say our industry for because I even ask every time we'd have YouTube workshops. I'm like, how come us we're not making as much? And yeah. it's because of our advertising industry. They're not putting as much money into advertising in YouTube as the way the other mm. companies outside do. Ah. Yeah, so okay. it's, it's not really if if mm. as a company, let's say my campaign, I'm only putting a hundred thousand. That means you're getting paid less because that's yes. the amount. That yeah, that's the amount you decided to put in, um. and there aren't as many. But I think even now when we go to YouTube, we know the brands that that are doing YouTube. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Food. Global. 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 You even start global juicy. Da 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 da. Like you know, yeah, yeah. You do you say you don't as many, but when you go to the US, even like if any other country, if you do travel and you open your YouTube, you'll get it's so, so annoying, many actually. different. It's so annoying. Ads. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you see too too many. Yeah. Too many ads. Yeah. 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 So actually, that's why I think they started that YouTube uh, premium. premium. Because for other countries, I think it's really bad. It in makes sense. Amount of for them. Exactly. Yeah. They like they they really push for companies are putting money yeah. in that. So yeah. if people are not putting money here and you're paid through ads, mm. where's the money gonna come from? Okay. YouTube That's is not valid. making money as much here. That's so wow. where are you gonna get the money That's from? Valid. Yeah. Corporates mm. pump money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Yeah, and also I think the audiences. I think uh, are mostly our Kenyan audience. These are type of content that they're not gonna watch through. If it's a prank, somebody's gonna watch through. They love, they like, they <laughs> share this thing. <laughs> But as let's say for me, yes, you know, it's my life. No one is really like some people are not really that invested. invested. Yeah. They're not gonna. They they are gonna enjoy some part and then leave it. Mm. That also affects how mm. I earn. Mm. Yeah, so you can find even maybe somebody even here who has lesser subscribers than me, but if they have more watch time, they're gonna be making more, more money, more money. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. that's really interesting. Mm. Please watch our videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does. It and the liking, the liking, mm. like people need to like. Liking has a very big impact. For real. On and how I don't you like us, maybe. No, yeah. we should be taking videos. notes here. Like the like, videos, guys, so that can you like, like the videos, <laughs> so that it's recommended more mm. to other people. It yeah. Mm. Okay. That's okay. really interesting. Yeah. Okay, we're learning because aspiring first... YouTubers, these are tips for your yeah. charge. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think us. Okay, we were kicking with this platform for quite a bit of time, and then now I think in our third year is when we started pushing for things to happen and now is when we're starting to think okay how are we growing this youtube thing and so yeah interesting to know about those things that we should have been researching and knowing about <laughs> but now we know so i think it just comes yeah. automatic yeah. Post, you know in a I mean, you know, <laughs> then we threaten people every week why are you not subscribing mm. why are you not Man. um i i think i had another follow-up question on the youtube conversation uh Did, I mean, you, you've mentioned that some people maybe drop off. Mm. The drop off rate sometimes can be higher because maybe you're sharing your life, etc. Does it get depressing that you're creating this content <laughs> religiously and people are not engaging with it? Not just maybe on YouTube, but mm. just in general in your content creation. I think with with my content, it's like a relationship I'm having with people, mm. and then I'm like, any. I'm putting all this. You're not reciprocating, mm. and you, you, the reciprocation I want you to do is something so little. Yeah, you know, just watch the video mm. or like the video or subscribe. Of course, it becomes. <sighs> it can be very disheartening, honestly. Mm. Especially if you also see the way if you start comparing yourself to other creators, if you look at the quality of work, it might be oh. so different. But this person has views, <laughs> and yeah. I think that's what <laughs> this person doing. has. Everyone subscribers people are talking about these mm. videos and you're thinking of the work that you're doing and of course yeah you have your people but then you're like how come mine is not being accepted this mm. way you know of course it's it, that's something we always have but i think it's something i've just started to accept mm. especially for you who invests in quality mm-hmm. i've seen mm-hmm. you guys always oh we have this new gadget yeah. this new money yeah. <laughs> yeah. i was just like you know what the poll who are here i'm just yeah. gonna cater to you if somebody mm. else sees it and likes it well welcome mm. but i'm just gonna work with the poll that i have 
and we continue growing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because sometimes, yes, you know, of course, like I've said, numbers do matter, but the quality of the numbers that you have also. Also really true. matter. Yeah. Because how many true. people do have we seen on YouTube who have so many views and, and subscribers, That's but so where are the brands? Mm. Mm. They mm. can't find a way to place themselves. Mm. Even yeah, on Instagram, you have oh, all yeah. the followers. You might also have good quality content, but brands are like, where can we place ourselves? Mm. So you, you also know? have to be strategic. The you have to content. be really strategic. And also, I know we see, we, you know, so many videos are going viral. Somebody did this. So all of us start doing that. Mm. It doesn't work for all of us. Actually, what I was, <laughs> oh, I think we've had this conversation with a lot of content creators mm. who come on our platform is the, the sameness, mm. just the repetitiveness or even just feeling like there's a ka, ka, ka group. You yeah. group yourselves as content creators. So if Eli is in whose video? Give me another content Routine. creator. Mm. If Eli is in Rotimi's content, Rotimi is, pro- is having Eli on the content. And then George Dirango. They are same people mm. are with George Dirango. Mm. And mm. then it's like there's like a ca- click. Ca- ca- click. Oh, yeah. there it is. feels <laughs> clicky mm-hmm. sometimes. Mm. And so we wonder how do you even penetrate through that click? And more so like how do you even make it as a content creator in this environment that everything is almost the same, the content is the same people every other day? You, you know, it it makes it difficult to find a unique touch and will yeah. the audience want the unique touch or do, should I go where my audience is following, which is what everybody else is doing. I feel it's like the, the individualism like, of content creators here is a bit limited from my experience. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, I think it's 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 true. We've, we do see the same faces together and I think... I'm not gonna say much because I've also been <laughs> part, of part, of that, part of that. Part of that. I think. I mean, I think in when you're in that moment, I mean, it's collaborative. All of you have an audience. It makes sense because you're all helping each other grow. But then it was there's the other flip of the coin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What, um. I think I've seen both sides: mm. being outside and being inside. Inside. Mm-hmm. So I think how you form a community because you understand each other. Mm. I think even the time that I was in kind of a group, it was because I was like, these people, we understand each other. Mm. Our content is almost similar or maybe in the same niches. In a way, we see each other a lot. or So you you get comfortable with that. You want to be around people who understand, who understand, who understand that. Mm. So I think it can, it, yes, it does come out like it's clicky, but of course you go where you feel accepted, appreciated, appreciated, accepted, understood. understood. Which makes That's so where sense. you want to be. Yeah. 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 And I mm. think also us as creators, the thing that we do wrong is, of course people see that as our complete lives. It's mm. not. Yes, to our mm. nana. We talk about content creation, mm. but that's about it. There's mm. there's no plus, and if there's a plus, that's what we are showing. But it's there's still more to <sighs> there's still more to it. What do you mean by there's still more kids? There's a scene there. There's, 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 there are so many. I think there are also so many dynamics True. when it comes to content creator friendships. Mm. Um, Yes, of course, content is what has brought you there together. But I think we, as all of us, are still human, so we still try to create more than that. I know there are content creators who will probably be in another content creator's wedding, you know, because yeah. it 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 gets more than that. Because now you are really merging mm. <laughs> your lives completely. Mm. So there's more. So we can't really like try to tell them, oh, you guys, you cannot be clicky. Mm. You guys cannot be like. But you do end up becoming like mm. family. In a I way. don't think my problem is with the clickiness, mm. although relative, <laughs> because if you're outside the click, then it feels like it's difficult to get mm. through. Mm. I think my problem is just the similarity in the kind of content that everybody, especially lifestyle creators mm. now are curating. It feels like when we see a really good video, like this is really creative, mm-hmm. like, wow, like oh, it stands out. Yeah. But a lot of the time, it's almost the, the same. same yeah. right? I think it's because also we are still trying to cater to our audience. Mm. 
you've seen you create similar content to this person they've gone with this formula you try if yeah. your audience also accepts that you what are you going to do <laughs> you're going to keep pushing the same type of content okay. yeah and i think originality is rare because yeah. <laughs> i feel like we are always looking for inspiration so yeah. we are always copying, copying someone mm-hmm. copying a Try, concept mm-hmm. tweaking kidogo but yeah. it's still the it's same, the same concept, similar yeah. thing you yeah. go on tiktok there's a way people do things spend yeah. the day with me do this with clean with me mm-hmm. so you'll clean you'll clean <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know the camera behind yeah so okay. yeah that yeah. makes sense yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes so, sense. but i think i remember saying once i was listening to a i think it's the master class or workshop that uh terembe and miski horo were doing one day and um i think they had tracy and the social insider and someone said you are you are a niche you as kids oh, yeah. you as yeah. Alice, you, you are as Alex. Are no one niche. can be me mm. no one even if we are all doing cooking content so there's a way i cook mm. There's the way Kate cooks. Mm. There's the way my kitchen looks that maybe someone likes the way my kitchen looks more mm. than how I'm cooking. That's different, you know. So I feel like when you... Because you can sort of overthink it and end up stagnant and end up not moving because you're like, oh, but Nani does yeah. this content. Yeah. But mm. uh, you see even recaps. Uh, even me, I said doing recaps from Terembe, Miss Kibati. Then I was like, oh, I like, I like this style of things. Mm. But I, if I'd be like, oh, but everyone is doing it. And I've never grown on Instagram because that's how I grew from recaps and i feel like that's how i engaged with my mm. with my community so do it do it your way you know you, Sorry, there's always a way <laughs> one last uh-huh. thing to start things up don't you feel like then it there may be a problem with how you're translating the content to yourself because mm. everybody's doing stories recaps so how can you make it you you're it unique to you instead of just copy paste this is exactly what they're doing so if you're doing come spend a day with me how can you then become creative because i think now it makes you less creative of a person which is why maybe you wanted to be a content creator in the first place is to really have impactful meaningful content but f- for you then your creation process is okay what are other creators doing okay this is exactly how we're going to shoot the same thing is there i feel like we've lost touch to that okay let's even if you're taking something how can we make it our own but also unique to some extent to stop that monotony like because mm. everybody gets inspiration from people yeah but I think, when... yeah that's my take on it okay I, i agree i mean i think for me the creativity <laughs> is like it's my life my life mm. is different mm. from mm. someone else's life there's a way me i party friday saturday sunday this is a person is in church friday <laughs> that, yeah. That, yeah. That, you see it's mm. we're all different we don't have okay. i'm in a different season from terembe i'm in a different season from you know so that's the uniqueness for me that's how i can now curate the creativity with how, just how my life is set mm. up mm. i think mm. yeah mm. yeah i think that's how you see how somebody is creative mm. that's when you know whether you're creative or oh, you're just a, yeah. <laughs> a follower yeah. of things <laughs> a copy paste yeah. if i copy paste and it's working it's working it's working yeah yeah mm. okay yeah. so mm. you come audience peer at a like you know push push creators to do more and be more because if everyone gets comfortable this is the format there's no reason why you should feel different you should feel like you want to do something different if the script the, the same script is working it's yeah. working yeah mm-hmm. why change which is and another thing that i anyway it's a, we'll I'll move down that because <laughs> i feel like podcasting is also the same if not worse yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. the the topics are the same throughout mm-hmm. they're also the same uh, most of the times and i guess there are conversations that need to be had but if you just look at a different podcast formatting maybe in other countries it's always a different areas and i aspire for us to get to that which is we'll, what we'll we are looking we'll to do yeah. at mts africa <laughs> <laughs> which is <what>? shameless plug <laughs> allowed always allowed <laughs> always allowed anyway, Kate, yeah. you said you're full time yeah. how has it been an easy journey to to be full time content creator because i know this mm. this industry this career sometimes is very unrewarding as you said sometimes gigs are here gigs don't come it's quiet crickets <laughs> delayed payments like I think being it, it's never easy yeah just like any other job kuna uh, like <laughs> it's 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 never easy and i think for us mostly content creators it's because of the seasonality of seasonality <laughs> the seasonality of what we do um like right now it's the end of the year this is where most brands are pushing 
the products mm. literally this is when Before. you're gonna get the most emails you're gonna get Crickets. big budgets <laughs> and <laughs> this is where Paul gets big budgets and all that but then January Kifika there's nothing mm. brands are quiet so it's and you still have rent to pay you still have yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's not been easy especially trying to work with brands as well like I said you know I started in 2017 we are literally where? 2023 how many years, years. is that? Six. crazy six mm. six years of content creation and i can honestly say from last year that's when i started seeing like for real this mm. is paying out so it's been just grinding and grinding and trying to believe in yourself because i think unfortunately in the world that we live in right now we keep seeing how we're getting quick successes hey kilamtu oh my god mm. people have blown up they're getting all these uh, opportunities and yet you've been there grinding and <laughs> And grinding yeah. and crying and you know scratching walls I blow up and apart a brands and all that it's that getting past that has been the most difficult part of me being a full-time creator but it's something that I've come to terms with because you know I think like I love social media but I hate it at the same time because we really are trying to be positive about mm. everything we are really trying to tell everyone oh my god your breakthrough is coming oh my god your time is yeah. coming your season but <laughs> is, your is, is is coming but unfortunately that's not what it's gonna be for all of us yeah. i think we need to be very open about it mm. it might you might see content creation since all of us are, are, are consuming content and you're like you know what maybe i can do that mm. you start mm. nothing <laughs> nothing happens yeah. mm. nothing now, happens competition now is high it, everybody has a gist exactly you think it's easy you think everyone <laughs> can do it it's but unfortunately but look why for 11 it's not it might not be for all of us it's not for everybody it's not for everyone. i don't think it's fair to tell yeah it's unfair to tell everyone. oh my god just keep at it you Guys, there's something, there's long suffering. <laughs> Even Jesus suffered for such a long time. Okay, did you listen to the same TikTok I listened to? Is it one for Jackie? Jackie? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Like with Jackie, she yeah. does say, if you look at Jesus, when was his breakthrough? At the cross. I'm You're really asking, asking me this. Just- <laughs> <laughs> this is no, as in if we, if we look at it even from like a human perspective, not looking at him as... as <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> his, and his, the way his breakthrough looked like, he was dying. He was dying for us. See, see, mm. the people who are the most. We don't, we don't appreciate anything. Literally, we are the ones who are crucifying him. You can take that as a breakthrough, and you cannot take it as a breakthrough as well. If you think about it, so maybe it's like redefining what a breakthrough to you. Yeah, might what, look what? Like. Are, yeah, exactly. Because our breakthroughs are not the same. For somebody, it's I want more numbers. For somebody is what I want to work with more brands. For somebody is like I want to create an oppo- uh, a community where I can actually talk to people and expect nothing from that. Because mm-hmm. even for content creators, there's some people who are in this industry who the brands doesn't matter to them. Mm-hmm. You still have a job that gives you that security. You just want it. And you, you look at this person, you're like, wow. But for them, this is just like a side thing. You know, it's not their full thing. People equate so, <laughs> to the fame or being being known as financial. As stable. yes, exactly. There's also that aspect, and it's not like that. And also, social media doesn't give you the full picture. Exactly. And just one piece of what you decide to show me. Mm. You know, you don't know what I do behind the scenes. Maybe mm. I'm a trust fund. Maybe maybe yeah. I'm. You know, like. You're gonna move or baby, yeah. Like, you know, you never. Or know. I'm actually really working for all this, yes. and I got it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, so you had to have that positive. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but but in this world like it's um, mm. i don't think we should it's it's important to be positive and want to do something but it's also to be in, important to be a realist mm. be let's get back to reality and really look at your circumstances and why you really want to do something 
because your heart might you'll really break your heart mm-hmm. you'll you can really put yourself in the worst positions it it does break it. and i think i asked you that question mm-hmm. of you know is it does it get depressing if you mm-hmm. don't get traction and i think your answer was in re- with regards to your personal goals yeah. uh, on the platform that's why maybe it doesn't affect you i think for me when i was starting youtube in 2017 after doing my foot videos with still less than one, you know, like 1,100 subscribers. <laughs> I think for me at that time of doing YouTube two, three years and still not seeing that progress that I 100% expected, you know, that pure optimism is what we call it. So it it really was getting to me because it's like my goal was to grow this platform, become that successful YouTuber. Numbers need to come. I needed numbers, but I just wasn't getting numbers. And I think when I now we started B.O.B., this podcast and just my personal content creation journey, I'm a content creator, but mainly for corporates. I think now transitioning to B.O.B., where it was at first, it was just like, we're just doing this, not knowing where we're doing. Mm-hmm. First, we just want to be podcasters and then transitioning, then lo- removing that expectation of what if, it has to succeed really changes your outlook on content creation and, and just how to go about things. Yeah. So yeah, you're hundred percent right that if your goal is restructure your goals, be a realist. And then how that will look like is how we'll. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying that you look down on yourself as well. No, again, it's ah, balance, you are, you know, you're the shit, <laughs> you're the shit <laughs> you know, you have you the best say? contest, you know, <laughs> it's important to, to build yourself as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Sorry, just... church, yeah. So I think they could church her. And I think being managing consistent, yeah, managing my expectations. But also has having a plan. I think mm. if you know exactly <laughs> you have the goal, a plan, mm. you need to submit a very strong plan that you know will help you achieve that goal. Because maybe you can see, ah, all I need you to do is just post a reel every week. Mm. Execute a plan also. You need to yeah. exec- plan it's and execute. To plan, it's but to plan, it's but not execution. Hey, yeah. You might have the blueprint, mm. but we can But also, to. I think you don't necessarily need a plan. Some things just fall on. Okay. <laughs> something, you know, uh, some yeah, things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. No, I, I do think if you're looking to work with Gilby's, surely it's the cont- or or any other, like, if you're, your goal is to work with the ABL, yeah. I feel like the way you create your lifestyle content will dictate the kind of brands that you're going mm. to get. So that's what I mean by a plan. Yeah. How do you want to present yourself? Do you want to be a... And Jugush, do you wanna be is your main you know Shang is your main faceless thing, page event so that yeah. you know the expected mm-hmm. brands that then to go out to then I think that still is a plan, you know. Mm-hmm. How do you wanna present yourself? I think the last question on content creation from my side would be do you see yourself continuing to be a full full-time content creator or do you think you're gonna now venture more into entrepreneurship, go to a nine to five, or is this still your bread and butter and you intend it to be that way for the rest of your life? Do they like this? Oh my god, welcome back to my channel. I love children at the end. Yeah. I saw her getting ready for a wedding. I just said, oh ah, my God, I, I <laughs> my mother would love this. <laughs> I think whichever point in life, you still have an audience. Yeah, true. You can still, you can still yeah, mm. yeah. As as even you, me pushing even me. your mom. Yeah, yeah pushing my mom to a content mm. creator. This is the content. Yeah, I think I'll... I think I'll create it until I feel like I can't. Mm. When personally, I feel like I can't. I don't think. Um, of course, I'll double into entrepreneurship just to substitute my income and have something that's more stable. Because unfortunately, mm. as much as I'm a full-time content creator, it's still not stable. It's not taking me exactly where I want to be. So I think the only thing that will change is making it the substitute not the main thing. I'll still keep doing it. I'll uh-huh. still post pictures. I'll still upload the uh, vlogs, but it'll be like a substitute, not like... The main thing. <laughs> if you don't do this, you're going to die. <laughs> you're not going to pay rent. You're not going to... Yeah. Mm. So I'll just keep... I'll keep at it until the day until I feel like I can't. Like okay. Yeah. I know we've not talked about teaching black, which I think was an amazing opportunity. And I'd just like you to share more about that and just how how you felt, <laughs> how the process was, because I, I think many people may not be familiar with yeah. With the YouTube black. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um I remember when I got that email, which was actually around like this time. Mm-hmm. 
What did I get it in August? But then when you get the email, they're like, oh, you can't tell anyone. So you have to keep it. Yeah, mm-hmm. you keep it. When I saw that email at first, I was like, there's no way. <laughs> I even thought it was like, because YouTube does send a lot of emails to creators when they have workshops yeah. and all that. So I was like, maybe it's a workshop or they're reminding people to sign up for it. But it was like, congratulations. I was like, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. I think for me, it was the validation that I needed. Yeah. After being all the, slaving on that app. <laughs> Living on this app, YouTube, mm. for all those years and uh, giving the, I thought, okay, personally, I do know I give quality content and I felt like people in, people in Kenya are not really appreciating it. That's how I mm. felt. So having somebody literally Google basically itself, mm-hmm. seeing my content and they're like, yeah, we're, we're gonna, you, yeah. We, we choose you. It was a very validating moment for me. And I was like, it's those moments where like, you never know who's watching. Mm-hmm. You never know. Mm-hmm. Like, just keep on. Just one person to change your entire life. Just yeah. yeah. one person yeah. to change your Yeah, those things are so coming. Yes, yes. Yeah. they were like, oh, but you know, maybe, you know. Maybe, you know, sometimes if you just mm-hmm. push through, yeah. just one you never, person will look yeah. at your content and yeah. you're gonna, mm. yeah. It was, it was very validating for me and it made me continue to do what I do. Yeah. Basically, it was like a push, like higher and the layer. Mm-hmm. Just keep at it. Yeah. So, is it a training or it's a grant or it's it's all mm-hmm. actually. Combined. It's a grant. Mm-hmm. It's uh, training. It's uh, it's networking. Like I don't think there's any other platform. How much was the grant? It's you can't say. That's why I don't think oh, no, if you search Danny, literally you right, right now when you, and I I am not I think there isn't a class this year as well. Yeah. Mm. There's no class. There's no YouTube black class of 2024 actually. Right. I'm not even sure. I think we might have been the last class. But, and you are just third class. Yeah. yeah. I, but I'm not sure. Yeah. But I know they've not the, sent emails for <laughs> But I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure about it. But um it's it's really opened my eyes and give me the energy mm. and made me love the app again. And like I was saying, I don't think there's any other brand I've seen that has really put into their creators like YouTube has. Yeah. yeah. So you don't see Mm. Okay, maybe in Spotify, Africa. Spotify, I think, is trying to Spotify get there. Spotify has tried with podcasts. Yeah, but even if you look, if, if, you I, if, we, if, you, if you compare the way they did theirs, hey, you guys, yeah, and the way they like, did, like, there's a very big I difference. Should be <laughs> the, hey, I saw you guys in SA, mm. then the guys mm. came, even came in here. Kenya, I was looking nice. I was, I was like, let me tell you the way what I was treated in this country. You were like, I was like, I'm really in Kenya <laughs> because there's no way. Why are you stopping transport for creators? We're just, I'm just like, we're just normal creators. Why are you stopping transport? Wow. What? for us wow. why are we going on the wrong side of the road why do we have police ex- es- nini? Wow. escorts I was like Kenya I you come to my channel lot on a pita. <laughs> why am I going to see them. the president why oh, why am audience. I here? because wow. of you, it was such a crazy yeah, moment I was like wow so Nico, yeah Kenya such a nice. Nice. it was a very valid, uh, like I used to feel very less than mm. Mm. But then now I'm usually just like, yeah, you know, oh you do what God. you do, but YouTube knows who I am. Google mm, knows who I am. They yeah. they saw what I did. So, they invested in me. Yes. Do you yeah. sometimes <laughs> fall out of love with your content? Yeah, so many times, I think. And that's how I try to redefine my content one mm. or another. Mm. I'm like, oh, these weekly vlogs are so boring, first of all. <laughs> Let's try monthly vlogs. I said, when I was in Instagram, I was doing food. I used to do food, like, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I'd talk fast. I'd be yeah. like, um, today we are making this and this. And then I show, and then I give a me after. And I'm like, ah, why don't we just do, like, ASMR and focus on the food and see how that mm-hmm. goes. Mm-hmm. So every time I feel like mm, it's not working, I try something new. Okay. That's how I keep myself going. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I like that. I like that. Amazing. So I think oh, final wonderful. question on content is what's the best, like, What's your favorite thing about content creation and what's like your least favorite thing with the career, with the process? And it- I think for me, the best thing about content creation is having an idea and seeing it mm. come, come to, to life. Fruition. Like you, you had this idea in your mind. You bring it out and pull like it. Mm. Like that's crazy. And you're not even like a celebrity or anything like that. Like I feel like content creation doesn't choose. Yeah. Doesn't choose. It's people will fall in love with your idea. People will fall in love with your personality. Mm. People will fall in love maybe even with your voice. 
just you you might be saying i don't know what but they love they love your voice i feel like it's i think that's what they say about me that's what they mm-hmm. yeah like definitely voice. and i feel too mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> i think that's what i love the most about it it doesn't i bagui i bagui yeah i bagui if people like, like it they like talk mm. yeah What's that guy's name? Man used to do. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> and he blew up. I think that was G he's working for. Yeah, that one. Yeah, and <laughs> even the people who've been doing the AI thing. Is it the AI or the gamer thing? Mm. Now for yes, yes, yes. Ice creams. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You know how crazy yeah. that is. So, 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 so. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hey. She, she, you see, it's, it's just what your idea coming, seeing it and poor enjoying. A TikTok. Hey, when you're going to... I don't like uh, uh, there's this guy who does kuja atwezi ko sana be kuja hapa nini DM DM upate and I think he still phones and stuff that he creates for you like yeah Yes. Well, Atwezi alleged. Kosana. Alleged. We don't know. Atwezi mm-hmm. kosana be iPhone 14. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I just think I that's just the best part. Yeah. The worst mm. part is hey, there are so many worst things. I like think all, that can also be the best and ba- worst part. Yeah. You know, the think, kutokubagua. Kutokubagua. Yeah. People, people accepting it. Yeah. Kwa Jimbo, you are in Forbes, you are living in LA. Kidogo. You're con- you've been creating six years and still nothing. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's also uh, things like, what is account. wrong with me that you, yeah, yeah. And the comparison, the, the comparing. The comparison. It's, yeah. Yeah. That's, has I think to be the worst definitely part. Definitely can be the worst part. Mm. But guys, you need to follow Kate's YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've been an avid follower. I think from 2018. I'd say 2018. And I think for me it's actually yeah, the consistency, the quality, mm. your travel <laughs> vlogs, we've already talked about her the travel Airbnb vlogs, and hidden the, gems, the hidden gems, he, is, yeah. You know, you try shoot a reel of, <laughs> of one thing, but let me expect <laughs> just <laughs> try to do no post. See, even <laughs> me even me I can't travel content for some reason I struggle just stories. I, I don't really say I'm doing the most. Mm. Hey. nothing oh, no, not okay. tour, like i'm like i'm not enjoy you <laughs> yeah i think i'm always stuck between enjoying because contemplation is work it's yeah. not just you're there ah, before you eat just let me just mm-hmm. you know before you settle, let everybody, me take a video everybody smile them. everybody smile especially <laughs> the people who are not content creators and i think that's where coming it comes in being friends with content creators yeah. and doing things like that because with non content creators sometimes they're just like umsianabo yeah. anaposhabash <laughs> anyway yeah mine is just to say be sure to subscribe <laughs> to kids channel as you can see she's very passionate about youtube yeah. and she's been consistent eh, six years uh-huh. yeah. since yeah. and we know so many um people even instagram influencers who started on youtube and completely said forget about it yeah. I'm, yeah. i'm not on youtube anymore let me focus on it's instagram. a very difficult platform to grow yeah in. it is yeah. Amazing. I wanted to ask about uh, your relationship with your mom. I feel like that's one of the most <laughs> cutest things yeah. ever. And I know you guys hang out. A lot. Your mom is a YouTuber as yeah. well. Yeah. And Apo amazing. Ma- ma content. Amazing content as well. So like, how, like, yeah, tell us. Have you guys always been close? Mm-hmm. <laughs> how has <laughs> that been? Like, is it when you moved out? Is it now you started loving each other more? Like, yeah. You know what's funny? Mm. The father of mom's YouTube and she didn't want me to do it. It's always initially. yeah, it's usually the funniest thing. Mm-hmm. And I usually tell people I feel like I'm the greatest influence in the world because I influenced my mom. Yeah. I influenced my mom to do something that she thought was, <laughs> was nonsense, nonsense basically yeah. because um she didn't content creation, she didn't see any future in it and it did bring issues between us, but I'm happy we were able to get through that. Yeah, of course when they moved that out then she became better. <laughs> Guys, that's the secret. That's the secret. <laughs> For like shouting at me on this podcast. <laughs> I mean, that is the secret. I don't know if Yeah, because I knew if I stayed, I'll not be able to fully See. pursue and push what I wanted. So, yeah, I think we, we got closer after that. Yeah. Um, maybe in the future we might actually do something for real yeah. together that is substantial. Because now she understands it. She understands the industry. 
and I'm happy that she was she she put herself out there. It's not easy. Mm. Yeah. Yes, it is. Mm. Industry aside, what was the nature of your relationship, and how did you guys become close? Close, um, because I think um, my mom has spoken about the way she's got she got me when she was very young. Mm. So for most of my childhood, I was not with her, mm. and. As I grew older, of course, I was in boarding school, so we really didn't have a relationship. Yeah. yeah, I think our relationship really started growing after high school, and even after high school, you know, she's like, you know, you need to get her, you need to go to uni. Mm. Once you're done with uni, okay. oh, you need to get a job mm. and like a substantial job. So there's all these things that were coming in between mm. us having like a proper relationship. As all mother daughter relationships, yeah, most. So actually, content education was a way for me to repair that relationship in a way in a way because i did do mother daughter conversations on my mm. youtube channel and i know people really like that you're very honest and that was yeah. a, a time that we can bear ourselves and yeah. be naked you know because you know we can't even a mama but yeah. if i'm like mom i'm doing content yeah. and i have these questions she's like okay i know you take this seriously so she'll answer so it's a way of me getting to know her more yes. and that's bonding and understanding healing. yeah and healing and understanding mm-hmm. each other so our relationship has not always been great mm-hmm. but now i think we're at a place where it's this is the best it's been mm. ever, actually. I love that. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I think it's, we need to talk about that. Like, just parent relationships mm. generally, you mm. know. Because as you said, yes, the circumstances, then school and mm. then boarding. And then yeah. I would come and she's like, now she wants to be a mother strict, you know. Like, yeah. And of yeah. course, it was coming from a good place. But for you, like, I want to know you as a friend mm-hmm. and you know and, and even even when i was there she my brother came because we have a like a 15 year age so gap with my brother so now she's my you, you know what? <laughs> yeah it's been an interesting journey that's all i can say yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. amazing i like that there's light at the end of the time yeah. and um I know there's so many people, that's what I'm saying, I think we need to have it as a topic, who may not have the best relationships with either both parents, one parent. Relation. How to mend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, How so there's, there's hope. With there's hope. Yeah. hope and there's, it takes, I think it takes a lot of courage to, to actually start having those conversations, mm. going to therapy, forgiving, and also because... And then the day she probably thought she was doing the best thing. Yeah, of you course. Know, yeah, of course she's but, thinking, yeah. yeah. So forgiving each other, forgiving oneself. And yeah, love to see it. Sorry, one second before you continue, I'm writing the building your relationship with your parents. <laughs> <laughs> talk about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. So I think we can talk about friendships briefly as we close up the episode. Mm-hmm. We love friendships on this podcast. Like talking about yeah. friendships and all that. Because yeah, I think... Friendships are a beautiful thing, but they're also, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so what does yeah, friendship yeah. mean to you in your own words? Um, I think friendship to me is a chosen family. Mm. Mm. Chosen, chosen family, chosen sister, chosen brother, chosen. That's what I think, because I've never had siblings. Mm. Okay, now I do have a sibling, <laughs> but <laughs> it's choosing it's like having for me it's like having a sibling honestly yeah. having honestly now that i think about it what do i think of friendship <laughs> other than that because i'm like even now that i have a sibling our relationship is just not what i think a friendship <laughs> should be as well <laughs> but i think okay friendship is having somebody that you love care for that you have chosen. Mm. Yeah. Because no one forces you. Yeah. yeah. Friendship, you, you choose. You choose, you choose to be around choose. somebody. Mm. You choose to open up to somebody. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. How has your journey in friendships been like? My journey in friendships. In the 20s, a lot happened. I feel like in high school, primary, mm. you're sort of living the same life. Mm-hmm. So things are more straightforward. And then now when you're an adult, it's like, okay, now, my primary friends are gone. My high school friends are in another continent. We need to make new friends. We need to do this thing. Yeah, so how has adult friendships been for you? Making yeah. them? Making them. them. <laughs> hey, let me tell you. I think for me, like I was telling you earlier, yeah. I'm fresh out of a friendship. Yeah. Multiple mm. friendship breakups yeah. <laughs> happening wow. within a short uh time and i think it made me reevaluate everything mm. not only about friends but about myself wow 
So for now, I I don't even think I have the proper words to <laughs> to explain. Mm. But um I think in in friendship that's where you really get to know who you are as a person and you get to grow and change a couple of things. I yeah. think right now especially with the way we have social media so easy we are really pushing individualism mm. you know just being you you you're always right mm. you know mm. you're always either the victim or you cut decide off. i'm always the villain you know cut, cut off these off. people <laughs> <laughs> cut you know cut yeah. people protect off your protect your space protect your peace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so i think for me right now in friendship i mean the uh, um, i mean a space of who am i yeah and then now what do people around me make me feel about the person that i am mm. that's where my friendship kind I, of situation I, I, I really is that answer mm. because despite all that has happened you're still looking within you're still yeah. being like okay not blaming yourself but mm. like okay what role did i play in this because yeah. always say it takes two to tango so yeah, you don't <laughs> You, you had allowed a, them mm. to cause that you mm. gave them <laughs> what no. about you yeah. made them make that mm. action do I have mm-hmm. firm boundaries or mm. maybe I need to you know do I don't I maybe I don't speak up enough maybe mm. you know because I like that like mm. introspection yeah I think everyone does play a role mm. you're not I don't think we are always problem free or mm. fault yeah. free mm. in whichever situation and of course everyone will have their own you know you did this I did this but I think it's important to look within and see mm. what role did you play in certain situations mm-hmm. but also it's important to not let people have so much power over you as well yeah. because this will have just most friendships maybe somebody has been with you for such a long time so mm-hmm. they really know you so i think don't let people have so much what can i say power, power mm-hmm. over you because this person of course they know you but do they really know you mm-hmm. Do you want them to know? Do you really do, yeah exactly. Mm. There's so many there's so many aspects in friendship. Mm, <laughs> it's exactly. crazy, but yeah. I think you just choose who you want to fight for and keep mm, mm, keep choosing. Keep choosing. Keep choosing. Choose yourself as well. I think it's both both of you all need to decide to choose each other. Yeah. And it can't fight be for each, it can't be one person mm. now that's, I think that's that's relationships in general. Yeah. yeah. I tell yeah. you it let's even mom. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm. just you have to choose, you have to choose, 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 choose grace. Mm. Yeah. You know, but I feel like there's usually so many aspects in friendship mm. that unfortunately I don't think we ever got to come to the finish in one conversation finish in one yeah. conversation or come to the con- or know everything or about yeah you can't know everything thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay yeah. Wow. Thank thank you. You. do you have any thoughts on friendship to add on that ama i relate completely <laughs> i think with the with the choosing mm. and when we talked earlier you mentioned like yes the breakups happen mm. but it was an experience and yeah, we were having a conversation with friends some time back and it's like sometimes in life we hold on to so many things and it ends up hurting us more rather than just releasing things and saying that was an experience yeah. and sometimes we feel like we own people we own our partners we own our friends so when things go wrong you know we're like distraught in another way that's like unhealthy but when you just say okay that was an experience and i went through that experience what can i pick up that can mm-hmm. help me that can build me and not feel like and i'm not saying don't feel the pain don't feel the hurt feel all of that feel it <laughs> feel it in fact it's good mm-hmm. because once the, the four months have passed you're like oh actually i was so hurt the other day but yeah. today i can breathe normally you know and i've and mm. i've gone through it but i've picked up something from that you know and even if that means that so and so was not my person that's fine i've picked that up and i've and i've moved on so i feel like just that thing of not holding on to people not holding on to things but allowing ourselves to just experience them mm-hmm. yeah and try find yourself mm. between all that because okay. everything just teaches you more about yourself more mm-hmm. than anything mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Like Yeah. 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 Okay. I think this has been a very <laughs> powerful episode. We've got to learn a lot more about content creation and your journey towards getting to where you are today. 
We've also touched a bit on friendships and mother-daughter relationships. So I think it's been a wholesome episode. Yep. Thank you so much for gracing our (laughs) invite and for coming and having this conversation with us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed. I did. I did. I did. (laughs) Coming to Tena, Natena, Natena. I'm sure there's always something we can (laughs) talk about. Yeah. And Meskia, Mamboya likes. Mm. (laughs) Subscription. Like, like, subscribe. Miss but yeah. it's on YouTube, so it's not rumors. <laughs> they're, they're actually the things that In count. Fact, <laughs> what's worse is you have so many platforms to support us. At a, if you're listening on Spotify, Pale Audio, I know you're taking a walk, you're cooking, you're doing something and listening to us. Just wipe your hands there in the kitchen, Kidogo. Subscribe, follow, you know, just on Instagram as well. Supporting Share us with throughout friend. doesn't take yeah. much of your energy, just takes just a little bit of an action for your support, including. Kate's platform as well. She's an amazing content creator. Her journey has been inspiring to say the least. And it's just been amazing to hear from another lovely lady mm. to come and share with us knowledge. The ladies we bring in this podcast are normally fantastic. <laughs> so branch bros, start sending in your suggestions on who you want to come on the platform. Yeah. Amazing. So thank you guys for listening to episode 120. Yes, as well as has Amesema, Amesema Tena. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, follow, share with a friend. I always say like sharing is caring. <laughs> Don't mouth. enjoy, and then you just enjoy mm. for yourself. Yeah. But with my Palekwa conversation, I was listening to a podcast, a uh, bunch of a branch, and they were talking about, <laughs> you know, you know, those kind of things. <laughs> those are the yeah. things. And then, and then, oh, did you get it? Did you get it? It's banter of a branch. Mm. Mweke kwa simu. Mweke kwa simu. Yeah, yeah, this is the one. If you know mm. someone who wants to get on YouTube, share with them this uh, episode it's an mm. amazing episode you know mm. so yeah <laughs> when you get to 20,000 subscribers boyfriend edition so you know what to do <laughs> <laughs> okay 20k someone pick up so right, sorry guys, guys thank you so much my name is Alexia Msao my name is Alice Kanji and we had Kate Candy. <laughs> <laughs> see you in the next one see you in the next one bye